Ask a, a student in school, how is your deen? What are you doing for Iman? How is your Quran? How is your Salah in the Masjid? How is your Qiyam al layl Are you waking up for Dua at night? Are you remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly? How is your manners? How is your akhlaq? How are you dealing with your parents? Are you dealing with them properly? He says, Oh Allah al azim Shaykh, Wallahi, I'm just too busy now. You know, I'm in school and you know school is hard. And my parents are on my back every day and do this and do that. I have no freedom. No way I'll achieve anything in this period. But I promise you, Shaykh, inshallah, once I graduate from school, Allahu Akbar, Shaitan pats you on the back, you know? He pats you on the back of your neck, say, Habibi, he talks to you like your best friend. He talks to you like a Shaykh. He says, brother, you are stuck now. You're in a situation now. I promise you. Once you graduate from school, freedom. <laughs> don't worry. I'll take you to the mosque myself. I will wake you up for the My Don't need for alarms. Where am I? Where, where am I going? I'm your Qareen. I'm your best friend, you know? And he keeps patting you on the back and massaging you softly until you submit and say, Allah, now no way. Inshallah, after school, 100% deen. Masjid, Iman, Quran. Haram school finishes. He graduates. The Shaykh comes to him and says, MashaAllah, brother, MashaAllah, sister, what happened? Where are your promises? He goes, Shaykh, Wallah, I'm stuck in uni now. And you know, uni, Shaykh, Wallah, Wallah, I miss school days, you know? Everyone in uni says, What? Where are school days? Wallah, they were the best days. We were free. We had the time to do whatever we wanted. Shaitan has dragged you from school to university. And in university, again, we delay. Wallah, we stuck. It's very hard. The fitna, the fitna in uni, Shaykh, you have no idea. We are struggling. It's very hard. No way I can worship Allah in that state. But inshallah, Shaykh, I promise you. And Shaitan just promised me too. Inshallah, once I finish uni, 100%. Where am I going to go, Shaykh? Where am I going to go? 100% masjid, Quran, qiyam, akhlaq, Allah. Whatever you want, I'll be there with you. I'm free. No assignments, no doctors, no exams, nothing. Freedom. He finishes university, a haram, and then he wants to get married. He says, Sheikh, we are living, you know, in a very, very dangerous place. You know, there's so much dangers around us, the environment. We're going to sleep. We're going to fall in haram. Please, Sheikh, let me get married. Wallahi, Sheikh, you know, we all are young men, young women. I say, Wallahi, all I want is a partner to assist me in my deen. Inshallah, once I get married 100%, I'm just missing this sakina in my life. Once she comes in my life, I'm Romeo, she's Juliet, and it, it, we're on, mashallah. Everything will be sweet, deen will be beautiful, salah in the masjid. She wake me up for the hajjud, I'll wake her up for the hajjud. Little does he know, a haram, once he gets married, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. No salah, no deen, no lie, nothing, nothing. People get married and they start saying, oh, where are the days of freedom? Those who are married are wishing they were not married. And those who are not married are wishing they were married. You know, subhanallah. Because now you think you are busy. But soon when you have a family, you have children. Now you have to pay bills. You have to pay rent. You have to do this. You have to look after her. Take her out. Take her to holidays. She wants this. She wants that. You want this. He wants that. And it's gone. This is why, my brothers, if you look at our lives, there is no point in life where a Muslim will have free time for deen. We have to make time for deen. The Muslim plans ahead says, now is the time. No delay. Don't believe the promises of shaitan. Don't believe the false ropes of shaitan and iblis. Don't worry, in the future, this is the disease that is destroying our deen. Everyone thinks, inshallah, in the future, things will get better. This is why the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, my brothers, they took the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at his words sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, badiru bil a'mali sab'a. Race to a'mal, rush to good deeds, compete in good deeds, compete in deen, before you are hit with one of the seven afflictions. What are you waiting for? Hal tantadhiruna illa faqran munsiya? What are you waiting for? A poverty, such poverty that will make you completely forget about deen. Nowadays, alhamdulillah, things are available, money is available. Financially, we are doing very good compared to the rest of humanity, my brothers. MashaAllah, everything is available. For, imagine you are hit with such poverty. 
there's no food on the table for your family, for your children. How can you focus in deen? How can you focus in salat? How can you read Quran? How can you study knowledge? You can't think. Hal tantadiruna illa faqran munsiya or the opposite, aw ghinan mutghiya. Now, mashallah, you're a bludger, you know, you're doing nothing. Maybe Allah will, will give you so much. You'll become one of those very, very businessmen who don't even have time to scratch their face. You know, he can't, oh, brother, come to the masjid. So, masjid, brother, time is money for me. Every minute, dollars are coming in. Too busy to worship Allah, too busy to learn deen, too busy to learn Quran. Aw ghinan mutghiya, or such money and richness that will make you transgress against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cross the boundaries. هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا فَقْرًا مُنْسِيَةً أَوْ غِنًا مُطْغِيَةً أَوْ مَرَضًا مُفْسِدًا Or a disease that will make you incapable or will destroy your ibadah and worship. You know when someone is sick, even if you have a little flu, you can't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. You have a blocked nose, you can't read Quran properly. You want to make sujood, you feel uncomfortable. You have a bit of a fever, you can't worship Allah. What are you waiting for? Now you are healthy. Maybe tomorrow you will be sick. Use your time, race to good deeds. This was the spirit of Sahaba. This was the advice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aw maradan mufsida, aw haraman mufannida, or old age. Maybe Allah will make you live until you are old. And then you can't worship Allah properly. You want to go to the masjid, your back is hurting you. You want to make sujood, Allah the doctor said, don't, your knees and this and that. Or it will make you incapable of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, incapable of worshipping Allah. So, هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا فَقْرًا مُنْسِيَةً أَوْ غِنًا مُطْغِيَةً أَوْ مَرَضًا مُفْسِدًا أَوْ هَرَمًا مُفَنِّدًا أَوْ مَوْتًا مُجْهِزًا Or sudden death. Nowadays, my brothers and my sisters, young men, young women are dying more than older people. Elder people are living, but young people are dying more often now. Diseases, subhanAllah, that we always heard only come to elder people are now coming at young teenagers. We are hearing the stories. Now there is no, no guarantee you will live. No one should ever have the hope. I will live five years, I will live ten years. How do you know? A little car accident and you're gone. A small disease, unexpected, around us. Allah shows us signs around us. But still, my brother, shaitan is fooling us. Aw mawtan mujhiza, aw dajjal. Are you waiting for the dajjal? The Prophet of Allah said this, aw dajjal, are you waiting for the dajjal? فَشَرُّ غَائِبٍ يُنْتَظَرُ He is the worst expected. أَوْ السَّاعَةُ وَالسَّاعَةُ أَدْهَا وَأَمَرُ Are you waiting for the hour? The hour is even more bitter and worse. What are we waiting for? Why are we delaying our deen for? 